of our caliper exposed. Road wheels are all off. We're on axle stands. We're going to inspect the brake pads as well as just give everything a little bit of a clean. Because it deserves a bit of love. Just be careful of the rubber pieces here and here and the cap. We'll do. I don't know if you can see. In there, some stones. There you go, one's just dropped out. So we'll dig these out and just double check to make sure that there aren't any more. Um, also, found this nipple cover was off as well, so we'll just double check that there's no dirt inside. See that while we're in here? Have a quick look at our brake pads. So, get there, where the screwdriver is, and a teeny tiny little gap, so you're sliding back and forth, is our brake pad. So we know we have more thickness than this. The other side is marginally less. You can see. Come on. Here we are. Brake nipple exposed, a little bit of brakes part cleaner. This evaporates in seconds. Go around all four doing exactly the same thing. This needs to be as clean as possible around here. So where's our master cylinder? It's in here. You would know that if you'd seen the oil change video. So let's remove the cover and expose the cylinder. Let's see. Okay. So, master cylinder is where that white label is. This is our brake reservoir. We need to remove our float electrical contactor and then remove the lid. Put that in a safe place that's nice and clean. Remember, Blake fluid is absolutely terrible stuff, so we don't want it touching any other paintwork. That is imperative and then we'll set up our easy bleed system. I've already cleaned this around with a rag. We don't want any dust or dirt on here. Again, cleanliness is next to godliness as far as brakes and engines and anything to do with this stuff is concerned. It's very important. There we are. This little white thing is our float. That's what tells us via this connection here when the level is low and you'll get an indicator in the dashboard. But everything's fine so far. So we'll put this somewhere safe and then we'll set up our bottle. Correct specification brake fluid. Child proof seal, tamper proof seal. Make sure this is intact. If it isn't, throw it away, get a new one. Very important, brake fluid sucks in water. It's hydroscopic. So what we need to do is fill this from this guy and then we'll pop it on top of our reservoir and then we take the rest of the contraption to our first brake caliper that we're going to be bleeding and use our compressed air supply to draw it through from the front of the car all the way back until we see nice clear fluid coming out. Always leave a little bit of an air gap. Get the lid back on the new stuff. Lid on this guy. Making sure we don't cross thread. Double check that our valve is closed. Across the way that the flow is generally means closed 95% of the time. Some valves are not like that, but they will be clearly marked. This one, however, when the levers are crossed, means it's closed. This bottle is not perfectly vertical, but it stops at about 90% full, which is great. I can't afford for this to fall off, ever. So I've just got some cable ties here, just to stop it if it wants to fall backwards as it gets emptier and emptier. Okay. Cable tie. Nice and safe. 
There we go. Done. Let's go suck out of the back. So we have our air supply connected to our bleeder. This is just a little venture in here. We get a vacuum, it sucks it out, and then that sucks it down our pipe. 11 millimeter. Break this. Then we use an open-ended spanner. First, put our nipple over here. There's a little hook there to hold on. In the engine bay our reservoir is max we've used this much close the valve take away our restraining cable ties wipe up the single drop that was there so Screw back our cap, the level sensor 90 degrees all the way nice and tight. Back on with our sensor, click. There's a ceiling plug here, grommet, whatever you want to call it. Make sure it's in the right way round. It is handed because if not, it won't allow this cover to line up at all. So, there we are. Click, 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 click. Ready? There we go. Yes. So, we've used three quarters of one of these. Teeny tiny little bit left. We bled out that much. I'll show you in a second. It really is not nice, and there's a couple of little bits in there. Now, all I need to do is put the road wheels back on and then take it for a road test. Um, put the tools away and that's us finished. Well, let's look. Look here. You can see the colour of that. So, as we can't use this anymore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in the dregs of this new fluid into the old fluid bottle and you'll see the difference in the colour. Be amazed and you'll also realize that this is a essential job that needs to be well done so you can see old new see the difference in the color there bye bye yeah hundred percent worthwhile flesh out your brake fluid. If you're not comfortable getting it, doing it yourself, get somebody else to do it for you, but flesh out your brake fluid. This is six years old and it's a nasty. Oh, gosh, getting tired and it's getting warm. 113 foot pounds, that's how tight these need to be. So when the wheel or the car's still on the axle stands, off the wheels up, put them on, just tighten them up snug with a wrench lower the wheels or remove the axle stands so the car's standing on its own tires and then we'll tighten to 103 foot pounds number one two three four five you can do it in a single pass one two Three, four, 
five. Double check. One. Two. Okay, rinse and repeat three times. <laughs>